it is with some these thoughts of our hearts and this thought of the songwriter come of the Lord coming into our hearts that I want to share some thoughts from you from the Gospel of Mark uh, this morning. Uh, if you would turn there to Mark uh, chapter 8. It is page number 738 in your pew Bible, and I would encourage you to, uh, to use that if you don't have your own Bible and to follow along as we go through the message uh, this morning. I want to read to you verses 11 through 21, but our thoughts will mainly for the sermon this morning be focused on uh, verse uh, number 17. And this question that is asked of Jesus, is your heart still hardened? And so I've titled the, the message this morning, The Dangers of a Hardened Heart. So let's look now at chapter number 8, beginning at verse 11. This is God's Word, the Holy Scriptures that are able to make one wise unto salvation. And I pray this morning that it would please God, the Holy Spirit, to give to each of us ears that we may hear him speaking. Let's look now, beginning at verse 11. Then the Pharisees came out and began to dispute with him, that is, to dispute with Jesus, seeking from him a sign from heaven, testing him. But he, that is, Jesus, sighed deeply in his spirit and said, Why does this generation seek a sign? Assuredly, I say to you, no sign shall be given to this generation. And he left them, that is the Pharisees, and getting into the boat uh, again, departed to the other side. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread, and they did not have more than one loaf with them in the boat. Then he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have no bread. But Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, Why do you reason because you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive or nor understand? Is your heart still hardened? Having eyes, do you not see? And having ears, do you not hear? And do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many baskets full of fragments did you take up? Then said to him, 12. Or they said to him, 12. Also, when I broke the seven for the 4,000, how many large baskets full of fragments did you take up? And they said, seven. So he said to them, how is it you do not understand? Let's pray. Father in heaven, we seek now grace to understand. that our eyes would not be as the disciples here in this text, nor our ears, but that you would bless us with eyes to see and ears to hear, Lord. The message that you would have us to have, the things that we should do. So Lord, would you bless each one in this congregation now, wherever they are in their spiritual life. Perhaps there are hearts that are truly hardened this morning that 
cannot see nor hear what it is that you would say. Perhaps there are hearts here that have grown callous. Whatever the case may be, Lord, give us such tender hearts for us to see and to hear the words of Jesus here. And that you would bless me, Father, that I might faithfully expound the scriptures, speaking truth. And so, Lord, do I pray, be near to us. O Holy Spirit, come, search our hearts, and make application of these thoughts this day as you will for your glory and for the good of the kingdom of God here upon the earth. For the goodness, for the good of the kingdom of God here in this church, O oh Lord, help us now, we pray. In Jesus' name I ask it, and amen. Is your heart still hardened? That is the question Jesus asked. Not of the Pharisees who have confronted Jesus. As we see here in this text, in the first verse that I read to you. These Pharisees, as we note here, have come with the purpose in their hearts to dispute with Jesus. And it says to seek a sign from heaven for the purpose of testing him. I think a couple of things I need to point out here. First, these religious leaders of the Jews have, in essence, ramped up their confrontations with Jesus. And they are doing so for the purpose of getting something or anything to accuse him. Because Jesus has become a threat to them. They are offended by him through his teachings and also the fact that Jesus has taken the opportunities to rebuke them, especially as we have seen in the past weeks how these Pharisees seem to hold in authority the traditions of the elders rather than holding to the authority of the word of God. And all the crowds, of course, have been gathering to hear Jesus and his teachings. And so these Pharisees are threatened. And they've come, it says, to get a sign from him from heaven. Well, they had signs, didn't they? All the miracles that that Jesus performed. But what did they say about all those miracles that he performed? But that he did them in the name of Beelzebub, which is another name for the devil. So they asked him for a sign to test him. The, the King James translators chose the word tempt here. For that Greek word that Mark uses, test or tempt, in this sense of so that Greek word carries the thought of enticement. That they were enticing him to sin. Much like you remember that Satan desired to do in the wilderness. In fact, the gospel writers, they, they use who... who who have that account. I think all of them have the account of the temptation of Jesus. But the, all of them use that same Greek word, pirazzo, when they wrote of Jesus being led in the wilderness to be tempted of Satan. And that's the same word that Mark uses here of these Pharisees who have come to Jesus not to know about life, about eternal life, not to know about how their sins could be forgiven, 
but rather they come to him to see if they can get any ammunition that they could use to bring him down. And that's what they're doing. And so when Jesus asked this question, is your heart still hardened? You would think if you had not read or heard of, of the rest of this passage that Jesus would have been asking that question to these Pharisees for what they were doing in desiring to dispute with him and to seek this sign so that they could entice him to sin, so that they could accuse him. For they were doing these things from a heart that was hardened. But brothers and sisters, friends, as you now know, Jesus didn't ask this question to the Pharisees, but rather he asked it of the disciples. Those that he had ordained, you remember. Those who were with him and have been with him for some two years now. As we think in terms of where we are in the, in the years, in the chronology of the ministry of Jesus. He, he, is, he is coming to the end of, uh, as I understand, of his second year of public ministry. And, that, and the last year uh, will mostly be focused uh, as he goes to Judea and, and to Jerusalem for the last time in order to give his life. Does this surprise you that this question is asked of the disciples? Well, it, it, to be honest with you, it, it surprised me. It wouldn't surprise us if he was asking this of the Pharisees, if their hearts were still hardened. And I, I know I've read this passage a number of times over the years, but I don't know if it ever caught my attention the way it did this past week in thinking about would Jesus ask of me if my heart was still hardened. The implications of that are significant, aren't they? Jesus questioning the disciples about the poor spiritual condition of their hearts. It's not limited to them at, 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 and what is going on here in this text. But it is a question for all the disciples of Jesus. It is a question for us here this morning. Are our hearts still hardened? What if Jesus asked that question of you? How would you answer You know, we have some comprehension, some understanding about what it means for unbelievers, for the Pharisees in our text, what it means for them to have hardened hearts, as these Pharisees have rejected the teachings of Jesus. They rejected Jesus himself as the anointed of God, the Messiah, the Christ. And with that rejection... Should there be no repentance to follow or any belief in Jesus for who he is and in the ministry that he had come to do to finish, the work that he was to finish, we know what the dangers of such a hardened heart would be, don't we? Perish. That's a biblical word. It's in John 3.16. And that word means to be fully destroyed. Perish. That's the dangers of a hardened heart. One of the dangers of a hardened heart. But we are considering the danger or the dangers of a, having a heart that is still hardened from, from the thought of being a disciple of Jesus. So how is it that we can understand this? How is it that a disciple of Jesus can have a heart that is still hardened? And what are the dangers of, of the followers of Jesus in having a heart that is still hardened? 
Well, let's look at our text, and I hope to draw out the answers to those questions from our text. And the first thing that that I would have you to note here is that the followers of Jesus are subject to having a heart that is still hardened when they allow worldly teachings to enter into their minds and hearts and to influence them in the way that they live their lives. Notice what Jesus says to them in in verse 15. After they're getting in the boat again and they're leaving the the southwestern side of the Sea of Galilee, that area of Dalmanutha that is mentioned, and they are now going across uh, the Sea of Galilee. And the disciples there are talking among themselves about what? They've forgotten to bring enough bread for the trip. And Jesus says this to them as they are talking among themselves about this. Jesus says, take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. What does Jesus mean by this? Well, we're all familiar with the the concept of leaven, aren't we? In, in, In that day, of course, leaven was... Uh, the process of, of fermentation in bread that, that, that altered it in, in, some, in its contents, making it less dense, and, uh, or making it, yeah, less dense uh, than what it, than the original dough of bread was. And, and, those, and there would be those opportunities of where this old lumps of bread dough would sit around and through the process that, uh, Bacteria, I guess, getting into it, the, the, the start of fermentation would uh, begin in that bread. And, and then they would take a, a new lump of bread dough and they would add to that new lump the old bread that was in the process of fermentation. Then it would, it would uh, cause the, all of the dough uh, to become uh, fermented uh, in the start of the fermentation process. Well, as we think about that, that then became a metaphor for what sin does in the life of someone. It begins in a a small way, but then it it continues to grow until it consumes all of of the life. And so there's there's this metaphor of of leaven uh, being... the. uh, Corruption, the corruption of our moral values, our, uh, the moral way of, of living. And, and so Jesus tells them, beware of the leaven or the corruption of the Pharisees and also the corruption of Herod. Well, what is Jesus, what Jesus is warning here is that, is that of the corruption of the word of God by the Pharisees. And the corruption, as I understand, of, 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 of the political system uh, by Herod or the Herodians. And, and I might recall your attention uh, to, uh, to go back to Mark chapter 3, where Jesus is about to heal a man on the Sabbath day, and, and the Pharisees had gathered together and they're looking. What is Jesus going to do? Is he going to break our laws? of the Sabbath, the, the, the tradition of the elders. And they, so they are, they are waiting to see what Jesus is going to do so that they could then accuse him. And Jesus knows what they are doing. I want to read that to you in, in chapter uh, 3. Look at verse 4 there. And he saith unto them, that is, Jesus saith, says to these Pharisees, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days or to do evil? to save life or to kill. But they held their peace, it says. Verse 5. And when he had looked around about on them with anger, being what? Grieved for the hardness of their heart. He saith unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. And then verse 6, and the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians 
against him how they might destroy him. And so what I think Jesus is doing here in this warning of the leaven of the Pharisees and of, of, uh, and of Herod. He, he is warning his disciples about the leaven, the corruption of the Pharisees and also of Herod because they're going to have to deal with that in their own ministry of the gospel when they take the gospel to the world. And so the lesson for us in the danger of a heart still hardened is that it opens the door, you see, for false teaching. And when that door is opened, it can have such a tremendous negative impact upon the whole church. Look, look, what, look, look what is happening to many churches today. And their failure, for example, to, to discipline Members of the church who have fallen into sin, and especially sexual sins, like adultery, or even accepting divorce for non-biblical reasons. You see, that little opening in the door of accepting those behaviors or that sin, look what it's done. Over the years, it's, it's caused the, the door to be kicked wide open for churches to accept sins such like homosexuality. And there are ministers of the gospel who will now officiate for these same-sex unions. You know, the door opened just a little bit, and now what? You look at today and it's like it's been kicked wide open. The leaven of the Pharisees, the corruption of the word of God. A little leaven does what? Leaveneth the whole lump. So the scripture says. So false teachings can arise from a believer who has a heart that is still hardened. But secondly, the leaven of the Pharisees can refer to something to someone being a hypocrite. Look at look with me in, in, in Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, verse 1. Here Jesus has been in another confrontation with the Pharisees, and he has pronounced a series of woes upon them, and they didn't like that, of course. And Luke writes in the previous chapter, in chapter 11, how the scribes and the Pharisees looked for opportunities to bring an accusation against Jesus. And so that's the context that we, we find when we come to this chapter 12 and verse 1. Notice what it says there. In the meantime, when an innumerable multitude of people had gathered together so that they trampled one another, he... That is, Jesus began to say to his disciples, first of all, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is what? Hypocrisy. Here, the leaven of the Pharisees speaks of their hypocrisy. They're, they're being actors. You remember that, that Greek word suggests acting. They're being actors when it comes to worshiping and serving God. Now, back, back, back to our text, these Pharisees sought after a sign from heaven, not so they could believe in Jesus, but rather so that they could accuse Jesus. In the matter of serving God, you see, they were hypocrites. They were actors. And so the embracing of false teachings and being hypocrites when it comes to obedience to God, that is saying one thing and doing another, Believers can fall in this kind of sin, and when they do, it is because they have a heart that is still hardened. The dangers of a heart still hardened is that of embracing false teachings and being a hypocrite. But, but with these disciples of Jesus, their heart was not hardened because they succumbed to embracing the leaven of the Pharisees, but rather it was due to their failure to understand what Jesus was teaching them. Look at verse 16 now, back in our text in Mark chapter 8. 
and they reasoned among themselves. Now, I'm thinking of a warning is due here. Whenever that phrase is used to describe people who are reasoning among themselves, we might should have a caution line. Because when they start reasoning among themselves, most likely the end result is not going to be good, and so it is here. When they heard what Jesus was saying about the leaven of the Pharisees, they began to reason among one another. And, and, then G, and, he, and what Jesus says to them, and they reason among themselves, it is because they have no bread. That's, that's what they were reasoning about. But they, they had totally, you see, misunderstood and misapplied what Jesus was telling them about the leaven of the Pharisees. Maybe when they heard the word leaven in their minds, they began, they, they just had that one train of thought and they're thinking of bread. Oh, we forgot the bread. He's talking about us forgetting about the bread to take with us. But that wasn't what Jesus was saying. And here's the issue, brothers and sisters, friends. These disciples of Jesus were so involved with temporal matters of eating, of knowing what, of how it is that they were going to eat on this trip across the Sea of Galilee, that they failed to understand the more weightier matters, eternal matters. And that, I'm going to say to you, may be the biggest danger for us if our hearts are still hardened. Look at verse 17. And Jesus being aware of it, aware of what? Aware of their reasoning among themselves about not having bread, he said to them, why? Why do you reason because you have no bread? That's not what I'm talking about. Do you not perceive or understand is your heart still hardened? They had failed to perceive and understand what Jesus was saying, you see, about the leaven of the Pharisees and of Herod. But you know what? That wasn't the only time that they failed to perceive and understand what was going on around them, right? Like getting in the boat and the storm coming. Master, don't you care that we are about to perish? What did they fail to perceive and understand? <laughs> that the Creator was in the boat with them. That had the power to say, peace, be still. Where is your faith, Jesus said? Or what about... Their failure to understand that Jesus could multiply five loaves of bread and two fish and feed 5,000 people, plus 5,000 men, plus the women and children there. Or their failure to perceive and understand that with seven cakes of bread and two small fish, that Jesus could feed 4,000. People. They had seen that, hadn't they? With the disciples of Jesus, it always seemed that it was about temporal things. The storm, the limited amount of bread and fish to feed the multitudes. They never could or did consider the big picture, the eternal picture. And it was because their hearts were still hardened. There, there is a saying 
And you've heard it before, I think I've even mentioned it before, of one being so heavenly minded that they are no earthly good. Have you heard that in your life? Well, what does that mean? Well, it means for the children of God that they're, they're t- thinking too much about what is to come, which is good to think about. But they're thinking so much about that that they're not doing what God has called them to do and doing works of righteousness that he has ordained for them to do on the earth. That's at least one thought of what that means. But perhaps there is a corollary to that saying that that might be equally true. You, You think about this, that a child of God could be so earthly minded, so temporal minded that they can be of no heavenly good. I I don't know if that makes sense. I'll let you kind of work that out and you let me know. But that's what seems to be the issue with the disciples. They were so focused on the temporal things that they failed to see the importance of the eternal things. The heavenly things. And I think we can be like that. Now let me close. Our time is well past. But I want to close with just a few thoughts. I posed the problem to you, the dangers of a heart that is still hardened, but how can we avoid it? How can we avoid it? And I think we see the way we can do that, avoid it, in the words of Jesus in verses 18 and 19. And the first is this, to avoid having a heart that is still hardened, we must persistently seek to know God and seeking to know more and more of what it means to be in Christ. Verse 18, you see Jesus is scolding his disciples saying, have have you eyes that and you do not see? We must have eyes, you see, that see the glory of God and the eyes to see The glory of Christ and his lordship. Eyes focused on Jesus and not on the winds and the waves that are around us as it was with Peter. But our eyes focused on Jesus. That will help us to avoid having a heart that is still hardened. Secondly, it is having ears to hear. Jesus continues his rebuke of the disciples by asking in verse 18, and having ears, do you not hear? Well, we must hear what God says through his word about who we are in Christ and how we are to live as followers of Jesus Christ. We have been given spiritual life, and so we can now, through the Holy Spirit and Him filling us, hear God speaking to us through His Word. And that's why we see often, let them that have ears, let them hear. The disciples saw what Jesus did, and they heard what Jesus spoke but it seemed to not get past the eyes and the ears ears and get into their hearts. The third thing to note here is the need to remember. To remember what Jesus has done and to remember what Jesus is going to do. Verse 18 and 19, in a further rebuke, Jesus asked, and do you not remember when I broke the five loaves and the two fishes. How many baskets did you get back after everybody was fed? Twelve, they said. When I broke the seven loaves and the two small fishes, how many of the baskets did you get back full? Seven, they said. The disciples did not remember that Jesus can provide more than what is needed for any circumstance that comes 
in their life. The disciples did not remember. To prevent our heart from being hardened, we must always remember that Jesus, what Jesus did in redeeming us and causing us to become the sons and the daughters of God. We must remember that we are called to live in holiness before the Lord. We must remember that God's word is the standard upon which our lives are built. Our lives are built upon Christ, for sure. Yeah, I'm not saying anything uh, that's different here because he is the word, the living word. But we've got to have a standard for our conduct. We have to have a standard upon which we, the things that we believe, and that's the Word of God. And I think there is a vicious circle that occurs when we fail to see and to hear and to remember. It is because a heart that is still hardened. And when our heart is still hardened, it makes it virtually impossible for us to see, to hear, and to remember what God has done and what we are to be and to do. And that's the reason for our heart being hardened. But when we fail to do these things, it makes it almost impossible for us to see, to hear, and remember. So that's a vicious circle there. And if you are in such a state right now of your heart being still hardened, I would ask you to ask God to break that vicious circle. Only he can do that. Ask him. Ask him what David asked. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit in me. Brothers and sisters, let us guard our hearts. Let us be on our guard against having a heart that is still hardened. Let's pray. Father, you see us. You see us not as other men see us. Other men can only see what is on the outside. But you see what is on the inside. Father, if there would be some wicked way in us, if you see in us a heart that is still hardened, we cry out for mercy and we say, change my heart, O oh God. Forgive us, Father, for our failures. Forgive us, Lord, for entertaining thoughts that we should not. such thoughts that would cause our hearts to become hardened. Change us, Father, so that we may have hearts that are tender towards you and towards your word. For this I ask in Jesus' name and amen.